It's the start of the Christmas season and that means it's time to get creepy and cozy. I'm really excited to chat with you about all the books I plan to add to my November and December TBRs because it's just the time of year where I feel like there's just so many great themes, motifs, atmospheres, settings for books that are perfect for any kind of like spooky, paranormal, supernatural reader. I do have mostly Christmas horror and holiday romances here, but I do have about two short story collections and one nonfiction book that all fit within this theme of just like Christmas, holiday, and winter. Let's dive right in talking about all of the like spooky, paranormal romance books I wanna read that are perfect for any Halloween lover. The first book here is The Nightmare Before Kissmas. Honestly, I find the title to be a little bit silly, but I think it's just speaking to the whole like rom-com aspect of this book. This one is a new release and it says it's supposed to be a blend between red, white, and royal blue meets The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's supposed to be a little quirky, a little offbeat, and it's like in this world where holidays have like royalty and like their own kingdoms. Apparently, The Prince of Christmas falls for The Prince of Halloween. Just from the synopsis alone, I feel like I'm definitely getting the whole like Nightmare Before Christmas vibe when you have all of these like holiday worlds. The next book I have here is The Wedding Witch by Aaron Sterling. This is going to be the third book in a series. The first one was The X Hex, which I genuinely liked. Like I think it was maybe a three star for me. I think the sequel that came after that I liked a whole lot more because the main character just vibed more with me. I don't have a lot of high hopes for this one, but I think the premise of the two main characters here getting stuck about like 50 years past during a Christmas party, I think that could be really fun. I like when romance novels have a romance that's like slowly developing, but there's some other external conflict that they both kind of have to work through together. Moving on to two monster romance novellas here. The first one is I Saw Krampus Kissing Miss Claus. This is by Lou a cantrip. I found this book because I had recently read the Billionaire Cryptid series that this author wrote and I'm completely obsessed with it. So I'm like, okay, what else does she have in her backlist? She has this one. It's really short. It's just 82 pages. I love Krampus. I find that the lore behind that um, folkloric mythological character is so fascinating and I'm trying to read more books that have that character and then also getting to really focus on Miss Claus who in this story is actually the brother of Santa and the second little monster romance novella that I found on KU as well is going to be snowed in with a dragon. Christmas time I just really want like to feel so like cozy and comforted and be in a very like low stakes world atmosphere that I'm like escaping into when I read. And I think this book will really fit the bill. There's like this cute little dragon neighbor for this woman and they get kind of like snowed in together in a cabin and obviously romance ensues. If you like spice and this like faded mates trope, I think this book will be for you. I kind of struggled to figure out where to categorize this one. I think it kind of could fall within both romance and horror is gonna be Sally's Lament. This book is a very new release. It's part of the Twisted Tales series. It has tons of different books that remix the classic Disney stories that we all know and love and grew up with. Every book in the Twisted Tales series kind of starts off with this like big question that it kind of unravels throughout the plot. And this one is what if Sally was the one to have discovered Christmas Town? I'm super curious to figure out how it's gonna to compare to long Long Live the Pumpkin Queen, which is another book that was released under like a Disney approved like publishing company. They're not like super similar, I guess. I don't know. In many ways, I could see them being good companion books together. I'll read and I'll find out. I did really like Long Live the Pumpkin Queen. It wasn't like a fave, but I thought it was fun to kind of expand the world and the lore, the background of that movie, which I love so freaking much. I mean, obviously I have Oogie Boogie earrings and, you know, Jack and there's a little oogie boogie here. So I'm, I'm down to read anything that has to do with Nightmare Before Christmas. Like give me more of it. That book is the perfect transition from like my spooky paranormal romances that are Christmas themed to holiday horror. The first book I want to get to here is Krampus by Brom. Brom is an author that doesn't really hit for me. I think that their writing is very compelling and very easy for me to read. It's more so the plot. It's a very unpopular opinion, but I really tried to read Slewfoot and I just could not get through a man writing about 
very challenging female experiences. It's just kind of tough for me to endure. And then find out like at the very, very tail end of that book, then she has like a good for her moment. It just, yeah, it wasn't what I really wanted to read in that moment. And so I know it's a very unpopular opinion to say I DNF Slewfoot, but I did. And I also DNF'd Krampus when I read it for the first time either last year or the year before that. But I'm also a believer that there are certain times and certain moments in your life that certain books are meant for you to be read, that you're open to it or you've developed your taste, your palate as a reader in a way that will have you very much open to what the author is offering with their work. So I'm really excited to revisit this book. I know my friend Kelsey from Simon Slashers raves about this one. I'm super into Krampus as a character. So being able to kind of experience a story that is more like on the horrifying side with this character, I think will be a fun, fun experience. Speaking of horrifying rides, I'm super stoked to reread Candy Cane Kills by Brian McCauley. This book came out last year and I ate it up. I thought it was a fantastic, fun ride. I don't think it is the most like fleshed out story because I mean, it is a novella, but it was super fun. And the second I found out that there was gonna be a sequel, I immediately pre-ordered that and I'm really excited to have it. This cover is super fun. It provides a really interesting kind of blend of like religious horror, Christmas holiday. They are gory, they are graphic, it's a slasher. There's some pretty critical commentary regarding religion, but the tone is always supposed to be kind of like fun. But there are some serious things that go down in this book. So my plan is to reread this one right here and then get to the sequel as well. And they're super short, obviously they're novellas. These books will definitely scratch that itch when I want a little bit of like, you know, thrills, chills and kills, you know, a little Christmas slasher, that kind of thing. Last year I read tons of Christmas horror, specifically like slashers on KU, and a lot of them did not work for me, which kind of put this year a bad taste in my mouth for this subgenre. So I'm happy that there's a series here that really does work for me. Another Christmas horror book I wanna read is a little bit more on the gothic side of things. It's called The Taxidermist's Lover. This book is about a woman who's like obsessed with this taxidermist. In more so, she's really into his creatures. She has this like experience, this love affair, some kind of like um, situation with this taxidermist named Henry. And so then it's one year later on Christmas day, she's kind of retelling to us the reader what happened. So clearly something went down. I think it's going to be maybe on the dark romance side. There's some horror elements. So I think it's going to be a little gory potentially with like gothic sensibilities. My last category here is kind of like other. A new nonfiction book released called The Dead of Winter. Sarah Clegg is like a legit historian and they delve into the lore, the history behind some very iconic Christmas traditions, kind of folk figures and mythologies. This book is gonna deep dive into the history and the roots behind our modern day Christmas traditions here in like, you know, the Western countries. And it sounds very similar to a book I read last year, which is called The Fright Before Christmas. This one has gorgeous illustrations, but I think the biggest thing for me that I didn't um, super enjoy about this one is that it doesn't feel like it's a, you know, a narrative that has a thesis and kind of like um, a purpose beyond just kind of being an encyclopedia for a lot of really important concepts within like, you know, the darker side of Christmas. So I'm hoping this book is less a directory about history and it's more just like a narrative, like a traditional nonfiction book. And then I have two short story collections that have like winter Christmas themes and I need to decide between the two of them. I don't think I'll get to both, which is not an issue, right? There's more Christmases where this came from. So the first one here is The Darkest Night, which just released. And the second is The Haunting Season, which I think came out a few years ago. It's not a new release, but they did have a new sequel that came out too. The Haunting Season, I think, leans a little bit more in the paranormal. I think almost exclusively, they're gonna be more like supernatural ghost stories. And I think they're trying to be very gothic in the way that they tell them to. In the newer anthology, The Darkest Night, Night. This one has a lot of really popular horror writers. And I think this one's a little bit more diverse in the horror tropes and subgenres that they highlight in this collection. Clay McLeod Chapman has a story in here, Josh Mallerman, Rachel Harrison. Her story sounds really fun. It's a couple spends their first Christmas together in a cabin, but are they alone or does something else watch them from the tree line? That sounds cool. 
And those are all the books I am prioritizing this Christmas season. I'm probably gonna start diving into this collection of books in late November and take it on into December. I'd love to know which books here you've read, um, what your thoughts are on them, and what is on your TBR for the holiday season. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.